Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel Dentistified. Today's video is basically part 2 of dynamics of bone loss around dental implants. In part 1 of this video, I talked about the process of bone remodeling that occurs around dental implant and various factors influencing crystal bone loss like micro gap, peri implant inflammatory infiltrate and micro movements of the implant and prosthetic components link for that video will be provided in the description box below in this video i'll talk about the rest of the factors influencing marginal bone loss like occlusal overload biologic width crest module repeated screwing and unscrewing and traumatic surgical technique I'll also briefly talk about the concept of platform switching in dental implants in this video. So if you want to gain some knowledge about the above mentioned topics, then continue watching this video. So starting with the occlusal overload, bone is a dynamic tissue that remodels remarkably in response to mechanical, nutritional or hormonal influences. It responds favorably to functional forces by improving the quality of its structure and the quality of bone implant interface. However, over function beyond the threshold of tolerance of the implant structures could result in marginal bone loss as well as complete loss of osseointegration. integration. Particularly when excessive stresses are applied on an immature bone implant interface in the early stages of osseointegration. So the next factor influencing the marginal bone loss is biologic width. It refers to the area of periodontal and peri-implant soft tissue structures that is the junctional epithelium and the supracrestal connective tissues as you can see in this picture that acts as a barrier against bacterial invasion and food debris ingress into the implant tissue interface that means biologic width act as a barrier against the bacteria and food debris ingress so bone remodeling around an implant neck progresses until the biologic width has been created and has stabilized. So this means that bone resorption takes place in order to make room for attachment on the lateral surface of the implant fixture. Now once you understand the concept of biologic width, you'll be better able to understand the reason for maintaining a minimum distance of 3 mm between the adjacent implants. So the biologic width not only progresses along the vertical axis that is apically, but there is also a horizontal component of the biologic width. And this horizontal component of biologic width comprises of 1 to 1.5 millimeters this has to be taken into consideration when the implants are placed into adjacent sites in the mouth if the implants are placed too closely together there would be an overlap of the horizontal components of each of the implants biologic width now this serves to increase the vertical crestal bone loss between the implants. This is because the bone gets resorbed in order to create space for the biologic width to get attached to the lateral surface of the implant fixture. Next factor influencing crystal bone loss is implant crest module. I've already explained about implant crest module in detail in one of my previous videos. Link for that video will be provided in the description box below. In case you missed out that video, you must watch it. But still, I'll briefly talk about the implant crest module concept. So the crest module of the implant is the transosseal region of the implant which receives the abutment and it receives the crestal stresses during functional load. So another factor influencing marginal bone loss is repeated screwing and unscrewing. 
So repeated screwing and unscrewing movements of the healing screw results in apical migration of the epithelial attachment around the implant collar. Now this in turn results in an apical relocation of the bone level. This means that the bone resorption takes place because of the disruption of the soft tissue seal so that the biological space compatible with the health of the peri-implant tissues is restored. Then is traumatic surgical technique. Surgical trauma due to heat generated during drilling or elevation of periosteal flap and excessive pressure at the crestal region during implant placement may contribute to crestal bone loss during the healing period. And other factors responsible for crystal bone loss include poor oral hygiene, smoking and alcohol abuse. So patients with poor oral hygiene or existing periodontal disease experience greater crystal bone loss than the patients with good oral hygiene and stable periodontal status. And even smoking is associated with the deterioration in bone quality and impaired wound healing ultimately resulting in implant failure. And the individuals with excessive intake of alcohol may have inadequate nutrition including vitamin deficits which may compromise the initial site healing after implant placement. Diabetic patients are at a higher risk for developing periodontitis and also they are more prone to infection. Hence, the performance of dental implant is affected, of course, and poor metabolic control in diabetic patients increases the risk of peri-implantitis. So, to prevent the crystal bone loss after implant placement, various methods have been quoted in the literature and platform switching is one of those approaches. Platform switching refers to the use of an abutment of smaller diameter connected to the implant neck of larger diameter as you can see in this picture. This connection shifts the perimeter of the implant abutment junction inwards towards the central axis that means towards the middle of the implant hence improving the distribution of forces. So to conclude, I would say that the dental practitioner should be able to predictably realize the patient's aesthetic expectations and he should also be able to understand the crystal bone changes that commonly occur around the endosseous implants and even the soft tissue changes that occur subsequent to these osseous changes. So yeah, that is it for today. I'll talk about the concept of platform switching in detail in my next video. I hope you found this video helpful and you know an understanding about various factors responsible for crystal bone loss will definitely help you in the pre-treatment planning for implant placement. So I'll see you very soon in my next video. Till then stay tuned for that. If you like this video then do hit that like button and share this video with your friends and spread the knowledge make sure that you are subscribed to this channel dentistified if you haven't already and if you don't want to miss out any of my videos in future do press that bell icon which is next to the subscribe button so that you will get notified each time i upload a new video i'll see you very soon in my next one